Okay, we will start. Om Yasmat Jatam Jagat Sarvam Yasmin Yeva Praliyate Yene Tam Dharyate Chaiva Tasmai Gyanat Mane Namaha Ishwaro Gururat Meti Murti Bheda Vibhagine Vyomavat Vyapta Dehaya Dakshina Murta Yenamaha Taitiri Yakasarasya Maya Charya Prasadataha Vispashtartha Ruchi Namhi Vyakyayam Sampraniyate Om Shanno Mitrasham Varunaha Shanno Bhavatvar Yama Shanna Indro Brihaspatihi Shanno Vishnururukramaha Namo Brahmane Namaste Vayo Tuameva Pratyaksham Brahmasi Tuameva Pratyaksham Brahma Vadishyami Satyam Vadishyami Ritam Vadishyami Tanmam Avatu Tadvaktaram Avatu Avatumam Avatu Vaktaram Om Shanti 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 Vedamanu Chaya Vedamanu Chacharyante Vasinamanu Shasti Satyambada Dharmam Chara Swadhyaya Anma Pramadah Acharyaya Priyam Dhanamahritya Prajatantum Mavyavachetsihi Satyana Pramaditavyam Dharmana Pramaditavyam Kushalana Pramaditavyam Bhūtyena Pramaditavyam Swadhyaya Pravachanabhyamna Pramaditavyam Deva Pitrakaryabhyamna Pramaditavyam Matra Devo Bhava Pitra Devo Bhava Acharya Devo Bhava Atiti Devo Bhava Up to this we saw in this 11th, it is a very long anuvaka, I thought I will recite once, otherwise we may forget this anuvaka. Up to this we saw, I will recite the balance, then we will continue. Yanyana vadhyani karmani, tani sevitav yani, no itarani, yanyasmaka gum sucharitani, tani tvayopasyani, नो यितरानी ये के चास मच्छरे या गुम्सो ब्राह्मणा तेशाम त्वयासने न प्रश्वसित उव्यम् श्रद्धया देयम् अश्रद्धया देयम् श्रिया देयम् ख्रिया देयम् भिया देयम् संविदा देयम् अतयदिते कर्म विचिकित्सावा वृत्त विचिकित्सावास्यात् ये तत्र ब्राह्मणा आसमर्शिना युक्ता आयुक्ता अलुक्षा धर्मकामास्यो यताते तत्र वर्तेरन् तता तत्र वर्तेता Atabhyaya Akya Teshu Ye Tatra Brahmana Asam Arshinaha Yukta Ayukta Alukshya Dharma Kama Asyuhu Yatate Teshu Varteran 
तथु वर्तेता आदेश उपदेश वेदोपनिषत्तुशासन मुचैतुपास्यम सो दिस इज द एंटर लवंत अनुवाका एंड लास्ट क्लास ऑफ कोर्स वी सा टू अतिथि देवो भव इफ यू रिमेंबर आई ऑलसो talked about this father in law son in law business how uh, son in law felt that you know swargatulyo naranam swashira griham swargatulyo naranam in law father in law's house is like swarga this is how he started and then if he is wise enough he should be there for 5 or 6 days panchava shad dinani if people are not that wise then the shloka said madhu dahi grita varjam so if you stay beyond 6 days honey will go curd will go and ghee will also go <laughs> varjam is without varjitam then we saw the last line which said if he exceeded one month pada raksha prayoga <laughs> anyway that is on the lighter side of the atithi devo bhava which we saw last class anyway so up to that we saw which is roughly about 40% of this anuvaka and uh, in this anuvaka the teacher is really telling so many things to the students because a student life is actually the best life because syllabus is known is so structured in fact i set papers here and uh, you know <laughs> there is so much of uncertainty in the paper you know in my operations management course so much data is missing so people some students get very upset and they come and ask me i tell them outside world is like that how can you train you for a word which is world which is known to the last bit so i build it into my course but student life is always very structured of course there is uncertainty of the grade and all that but not withstanding that we seem to be in a very protected world outside world is very different so this last anuvaka which is a convocation address really brings a, a lot of issues in the hands of the students that's why this anuvaka is long so matra devo bhava pitra devo all those are over now it starts by saying nanyana vadyani karmani tani sevitavyani no itarani that's how it is starting so as i have been doing in the past this translation is very easy you can take a book and see it for each sanskrit pada there is a translation we are not interested in that so let me give a preamble to where are we going now what is this guru trying to tell the students we will look at it in some detail and then of course uh, as usual we will see the mantras so the next set of teachings which perhaps we will see today are two the first thing is what is your reference frame for life situations this is a very important question we don't teach it anyway in our mba or anywhere but this is a very important question what is the reference frame for my life suppose i need to resolve something there are some situations how do i handle it what is the reference framework he is going to talk about that issue again there are some very nice uh, see this anuvaka is so great because it takes you to the thinking process of the people at that time that's the charm of this anuvaka more than anything it takes you to what were they thinking that perspective to life so in this we will first see that what is the reference frame for life if there are situations and i have to need a you know reference book what is that and how do i look at it that's one question he is going to actually tell the students and then comes a grand piece the mantra is one and a half lines long but in that mantra i i uttered it shraddhaya deyam ashraddhaya adeyam the eyes when you utter it is in silence so it's not ashraddhaya deyam actually bi adeyam shri adeyam samvida it looks so short but there is a the loss of giving he talks about that i think we will be able to handle these two in today's class hopefully 
So we look at it, the preamble to this before we see the mantras. So the question in front of us is what is an appropriate way to live? We just get out and uh, you know we are going to be in the world of Vyavahara. From a student state which, which is all textbook, theory, it is all what it ought to be, what is the text, that's why we use the word textbook case. A student life is all about, you know, the know-how, not the know way or know what. Uh, know what, not the know-how. It is a know what actually. So when you step out, there may be issues. So the students must be given certain thought processes. So that is what it is. So just stepping out of this question, in this country, in this civilization, there are only three pramanas. The reference is called pramana. If I have to do something, am I doing right or wrong? What is my pramana? What is my reference? Right? In this country, we are all guided by only three pramanas. The first pramana is called Shruti pramana. Shruti, I have, been, I have mentioned this several times in my past lecture also. This society is guided by Shruti pramana. Shruti, first class of Taitri Upanishad, we saw it in great detail. It's all the Veda. The Veda with all its Vedangas is called Shruti, which is Mantras, Brahmanas, Samhitas and Aranyaka and the Upanishads which is at the end of the Aranyaka. This gamut of knowledge is called Shruti, which is Apurusheya. You cannot attribute any authorship to it. That's why it's called Shruti, that which was heard, which was not authored, which was heard. So heard is not in a literal sense. See these English words are all very very bad to use in describing our uh, Shruti is heard means not you know there is a headphone or something. Heard means what I could connect myself to it and then get that idea. That is called actually the nearest word is Shruti. So anyway that is the first Pramana for us called Shruti. The second Pramana to us is called Smriti Purana, uh, Smriti Pramana, Smritis. So you have Manu Smriti, you have Parashara Smriti, you have Agastya Smriti, Narada Smriti, Yajnavalkya Smriti. Yajnavalkya Smriti and Parasara Smriti are very relevant people tell for now than Manu Smriti. Manu Smriti is a little behind, ahead in time, I mean far early in time. Whereas Yajnavalkya Smriti, they came in different color yugas also. Yajnavalkya Smriti and Parashara Smriti are even more. So the second body of knowledge which is our Pramana are Smritis. Smritis are authored. Smritis have no authorship, unlike Shruti. That's why you have a Yajnavalkya Smriti. You have a Manu Smriti, Agastya Smriti, Narada Smriti, Vasishta Smriti or whatever. Then you have Dharma Shastras. Right? You have, you know, Bodhayana Dharma Sutras, Vasishta Dharma Sutras, Ashvalayana, different Vedas, Bodhayana is for, you know, Yajurveda and things like Krishna Yajurveda is something. So Dharma, Shastras, Dharma, you know, texts written by great. So there is an authorship here and these are far more voluminous. Why? Because Shruti is very, very concise. Samasa, it is very, very cryptic. It is very concise. It will not, it is like constitution of India, you, you need only about 100 pages. If you, if you take a font of, you know, 12 Rome, times Roman 12, Constitution of India is only about 100 pages in a A4 sheet. You want to administer a country with that. So obviously with that 100 pages, what do we do? They are, they are very, very concise. So it has to be expanded. So Smriti is not written out of somebody's imagination. I want to make this point very clear. Smriti is, Manu Smriti is not Manu's thinking. Manu Smriti is a Manu's attempt to extract this abstract idea in Shruti and put it in a little more detail. He has written it in 2785 shlokas in 11 chapters. So each shloka is a trip, is a duet. So think of you know 5500 lines in which he has uh, written it in a particular way. So Smriti. So the second Pramana is Smriti Prana, uh, uh, Pramana, Smriti Pramana. Then we have a third Pramana for us which is called Sishtachara. 
ಶಿಷ್ಟಜನಾನಾಂ ಆಚಾರ ಇನ್ ಇನ್ ಮಾಡರ್ನ್ ಯು ನೋ ಮ್ಯಾನೇಜ್ಮೆಂಟ್ ಪಾರ್ಲನ್ಸ್ ವಿ ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ಟು ಟೆಲ್ ಯು ಲರ್ನಿಂಗ್ ಫ್ರಮ್ ಲೀಡರ್ಸ್ ಆಟೋ ಬಯೋಗ್ರಫೀಸ್ ಆರ್ ವಾಟ್ ಎವರ್ ಯು ಮೇ ಕಾಲ್ ಇಟ್ ದೆರ್ ಆರ್ ಪೀಪಲ್ ಹೂ ಆರ್ ಹ್ಯೂಜ್ಲಿ ರೆಸ್ಪೆಕ್ಟೆಡ್ ಹೂ ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ಬೀನ್ ವೆರಿ ಕ್ರೆಡಿಬಲ್ ಇನ್ ದ ಸೊಸೈಟಿ ಹೂ ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ಮೇಡ್ ಅ ಡಿಫರೆನ್ಸ್ ರಿಮೆಂಬರ್ಡ್ ಫಾರ್ ಇಟ್ ಲಾಂಗ್ ಮೇ ಬಿ ಅದು ಆಚಾರ ಆಫ್ ಸಚ್ ಪೀಪಲ್ ಶಿಷ್ಟ ಜನಾನ ಆಚಾರ ಶಿಷ್ಟಾಚಾರ ಸೊ ದೀಸ್ ಆರ್ ದ ತ್ರೀ ರೆಫರೆನ್ಸ್ ಫ್ರೇಮ್ ನೌ ಕಮ್ಸ್ ದ ಕ್ವಶನ್ ವಾಟ್ ಡೂ ಐ ಡೂ ಇಫ್ ದ ತ್ರೀ ಆರ್ ಇನ್ ಕಾನ್ಫ್ಲಿಕ್ಟ್ ದೀಸ್ ಅ ಕ್ವಶನ್ ವಿಚ್ ವಿಲ್ ಕಮ್ ವಾಟ್ ವಿಲ್ ಹ್ಯಾಪನ್ ಇಫ್ ದ ಸ್ಮೃತಿ ಈಸ್ ಇನ್ ಕಾನ್ಫ್ಲಿಕ್ಟ್ ವಿತ್ ಶಿಷ್ಟಾಚಾರ ಯು ನೋ ಯು ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ತ್ರೀ ಸಿ ಟೂ ಕಾಂಬಿನೇಷನ್ ನೌ ಯು ಕ್ಯಾನ್ ಟೇಕ್ ಟೂ ಔಟ್ ಆಫ್ ದ ತ್ರೀ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ದೇ ಕ್ಯಾನ್ ಬಿ ಇನ್ ಕಾನ್ಫ್ಲಿಕ್ಟ್ now the question is how do we handle this you have thought about all that in fact all these are the background of the mantra we are going to see unless we see all these that mantra has a simple english meaning that's why i am trying to preamble the mantra with these discussions so now the question is if you give me through refer- three reference frames we should i know is there a hierarchy so there is a very clear hierarchy and the clear hierarchy is if anything is in conflict the ultimate reference frame is shruti nothing other than shruti i mean today's modern constitution in a civilized world we understand it nothing can go against constitution supreme court will finally say does it violate the principle of constitution whether a law applied in income tax or a law applied in right to information or a bbmp rule which decided to collect a tax from you or send a form to you and ask some detail which you don't want to fill how do you resolve it now there is if there is a conflict the reference frame for the conflict is a constitution of the country like that this society is driven by shruti pramana i have told it several times in my previous lectures why i am saying this is i have mentioned this in specific context now in bhagavad gita we talked about three types of food in chapter 17 that time i quoted from chandogya upanishad i said that is the pramana you can write off everything you can scratch off everything and say anything is in violation with uh, any idea about food written in upanishad go with the idea in upanishad we are guided by that so the f- the first principle is this cannot if there is in conflict our established they themselves have said it i will show you some of the dharma sutras themselves say that first i quite often don't find a major conflict between smriti and shruti but i find a lot of conflict between sishtachara and any of the other two look at this parashurama beheaded his mother's mother parashurama if we, so what is sishtachara now what do we do now a question can come like that if if parashurama beheads his uh, head what do i do about it look at ramayana there is a lot of debating going on if vali vada is correct is it proper to send sita to the forest you know in my city madurai our temple is so large so the the outermost prahara of the temple is like any street in any city it is so huge so in the south street if i have to use the word like that in the south street year long nowadays it doesn't happen year long there is a debating club and what is the topic is vali vada correct or not so people literary giants will come and then thrash it out left right center this is you know trying to find whether sishtachara is correct or not or is what vibhishna did is correct or not is vibhishna correct or you, you know bhishma correct now you can cut across uh, uh, because it's a very interesting story what bhishma did not do and drona did not do vibhishna did in fact in assam i gave a talk one lady asked me one sanskrit teacher asked me this question sir you talked about dharma please resolve this is bhishma why uh, bhishma is such a uh, great personality and uh, he got perished is bhishma correct or uh, vibhishna was a traitor i said uh, you know dharma sukshma is very hard but still whatever little i know i will tell i said let's start from the ground principles if bhishma perish he is on the wrong side this is a this principle cannot be violated 
then Sanatana Dharma is in trouble. So I said, let me start from there. If Bhishma perished, he was on the wrong, he did something wrong. If Vibhishna did not perish, he must be right. So we have to now have hold on to the Shruti Pramana and go, and then I try to explain. In a way, I said, uh, you have to look at it uh, more carefully. I may not have given you the right answer. But point I'm making, Sishtachara, look at Mahabharata. The entire war Krishna tricked throughout. All great people are killed only by trick. Arjuna, could, I mean, Karna could never have been removed from the war. All others could have been removed. It is impossible to remove Karna from the war. Karna could have taken the hands of Draupadi and gone. Krishna came and tricked them. In, in, uh, uh, Draupadi Swayamara happened. So if you look, so Sishtachara means Avatara Purushas. Now, the course, this really takes us to a serious problem now. So what do we do now? And I find this, uh, this uh, idea of uh, Krishna has been hugely misused in this country. Because uh, they take all wrong things from a Sishtachara and then justify what they are doing. Whether it is, you know, uh, in the, from the romance, uh, starts from romance to tricking and cheating, for everywhere Krishna is coming. So this question is also there. If Krishna can do, why not I do? You said Sishtachara is one of the Pramana. That's also possible. So all these questions are actually answered by this half a line mantra. Anyway, we'll see the mantra before that. The point I want to make is, as I told you, Ahimsa Paramo Dharma, that is in Smriti, not in Shruti. And then Parashurama does something, because in Shankar Bhasha, this example is there. So I took this example also. So what do I do now? So the answer is twofold. There are two answers. First, resolve this problem, then we'll come to the mantra. The first, first problem is, it's absolutely foolish to ask this. It's absolutely foolish to go behind and then dissect it in great detail. Doesn't take you, this is what, you know, wise people say. Yes, all these examples I have given. Don't go and then dissect it. You will actually end up in a in a position which is not going to be anything great for you. There are some Subhashitas also for that, and I, I don't want to quote, but point is, the first message is, leave that. You need to know, in, when Sishtachara is Pramana, this is not the Sishtachara that is in Pramana, because that is in violation with either Smriti or Shruti, you have just forget it. This is the first principle which uh, we should be guided with. The second principle is that's all right. I am now not interested in finding out why did they do it. The question is more interesting is why not I also do it? <laughs> that's a much easier question than this. So let me not now, okay, I will not ask that question now. Now anyway Krishna did it, let me also do it. Rama did it. So let me also do it. For which one of the answer people give, yes you can do it under only one condition. And what is that condition? Have you, so let me ask you when can we violate? I will tell you there are three, three things if you pass these three tests, you can perfectly violate. What are the, in, there is one actually, in, I think one Vakya also somewhere, I am not able to, in, one Veda Vakya is also there which suggests this. First question is, have you transcended Ragadvesha and the world of dualities absolutely? Are you a person who has transcended the world of duality? Ragadvesha, success failure, I like it, I don't like it. Sukha Dukkha. In Bhagavad Gita, we have talked about it so much. The first question you have to ask is, have you crossed, transcended the world of duality? Yes, you have passed the first hurdle. Now, more or less, you are, you are one third ready to violate the rules. Second, because a person who has transcended a Raga Dvesha, his perspective of the world is very different from the perspective of our world. In fact, the word, see English is such a poor, poor language. In Sanskrit, if you want to say world, there are several words for it. Jagat is one. Loka is another. You know where, where Loka has come? This is called Lochana. I is one of the world, word for I is Lochana. Okay? Aksha, Lochana. Now, one of the word for world is Loka. And it comes from the Lochana and Loka comes from two Datus. One is called Lokra, another is called Lochra. Lokra means Darshane. Lochra is also Darshane. So the Lochana comes, the, the seeing comes from this root. 
the world comes from loka it's a very interesting word you know what is world world is what you see the world is what you see you give me a cup of give you a cup of coffee to three of us for us the three are three different things our notion of world is very different there alokayate there is a sanskrit verb called alokayate who sees so world means actually the meaning of world is that what you see see the power of this word loka so it is called loka an insect with two indriyas its its loka is different from the loka for us an insect with three indriyas loka is different an insect with four indriyas we have insects with one indriya two indriya three indriya four indriya and we are in the gigantic five indriya even within us each one of us the world is different so the world of a person who actually transcended raga and dvesha ought to be very different from the, my world and your world so have you passed that hurdle if you say yes then there is a second which is related to the other second is are you operating your life in a pure 100% not 99.999 it's not 6 sigma it is not even 12 sigma it is 100% are you operating your life in a 100% know what is in it for me mode of living not what is in it for me keep away what is in it for me know what is in it for me negative of that on a 100% 24 by 7 if you have passed these two hurdles veda says vidhi and nisheda is not for you this this world of do's and don't this smriti shruti and all those are actually putting some whole gamut of do's and don't it says people who have transcended these two for them none of these apply because whatever action they take is not for them it's a much bigger thing which uh, you know we don't even understand so that is the answer so we leave that part now so you know we are not there so let us not look at the wrong things of a sishtachara and then look at it so these are all the things to be told to the student so our mantra says it in about half a line so we'll now have to see the mantra but anyway before that this is from uh, bodhayana dharma sutra look at what this is saying this is saying upadishto dharma prati vedam in every veda all dharmas are laid out that is you know chapter 1 sutra 1 i think 111 or something correct then what it says smarto dvitiya so if you are not able to see something of what you are looking at in the shruti it will be in smriti dvitiya smarto dvitiya tritiyastu sishtagama so then sishtachara this is that's what it is saying your pramana is shruti then smriti then sishtachara that's what he says this uh, vasishta dharma sutra that is the next one that qualifies it even more what does it say it says shruti smriti vihita hai dharma hai the dharma is properly laid out in a combination of shruti and smriti generally the conflict between smriti and shruti is less very rare and less it is only the sishtachara actually that's why it needs qualification that's why i talk so much about these examples also so now it says tad alabe suppose i am not able to access shruti or smriti see there could be situations where we cannot access existence is one accessing is another if i am in a situation where i am unable to access is it that you know i have nothing then sishtachara this is like saying i will attend a mba class in iim bangalore but then for that you need to pass the cat and then even after cat it is one is one is to eight that is our ratio of taking we, we look at uh, some 2500 students and take some 400 or something now if you ask what do i do you do some egmp or something if you can't do it there is a mooc so there is a massively online open course open online course come and take it so there are see this is not there this is the second best so please understand sishtachara is third best in the absence of anything that is the only thing you can do so that is what it is qualifying so all these ideas are folded into the next mantra guru is actually telling something let us see that mantra so that that question is also there we will come to it 
that's also there in the next uh, when we look at it we will so now this mantra says ya anyanavadyani karmani tani sevitau vyani no itarani so that's one part then the second part says yan yasmakagam sucharitani tani tvayo pasyani no itarani so there are two parts here it says yani anavadyani karmani anavadyani karmani means those karmas which are not viruddha to this body of knowledge called dharma dharma avruddha not dharma viruddha it's dharma avruddha that is why in bhagavad gita chapter 7 in the 10th shloka in bhagavad gita chapter 7 8th shloka to 11th shloka in chapter 7 7th shloka there is a beautiful shloka he says uh, in a uh, what does it says he says mayi sarvamitam protam sutre manigana eva he says there is no speck of dust other than me correct he says there is nothing other than me everything in the world is like uh, you take a long bead mai sutram uh, proktam so you know manigana iva sutre prokta manigana iva that's what na kinchi dasti dananjaya that's what he says he says uh, there is nothing else other than me now how do you explain it he takes the next four shlokas and shows so many things he says balam balavata masmi tejas tejas vinam aham like that he goes on giving how do i how do you understand this concept there there is a beautiful thing he says dharma avruddha kamosmi he says i am in that desire which is not avruddha to vruddha to dharma it says you should not be in conflict with dharma that's what he said that he said dharma avruddha kamosmi aham you can see god in all that desire in which you it doesn't you know clash with dharma i'll give you an example suppose i have desire that none of the slum children should go uneducated that desire is a good desire he say you see god there but on the other hand if you say i want to whack a lot of money and buy a 50 80 plot so that i can enjoy that is not dharma uh, you know avruddha kama we don't know what kama it is so you can't see god in that but you can see god in the other desire so you can't say all kamas are bad dharma avruddha kamosmi aham is what he is saying so some of those kinds of references are there so he says that's our anavadhyani karmani all those acts which doesn't conflict with this pramana right thani sevitavyani you follow only that you follow only that no itarani so by that what he is implying is if some of the acts that you have to take if it is in conflict with smriti or shruti or combination of that you are not supposed to do it please understand this guiding principle of how do you take resolve your dilemmas in life or some of the trade offs and things like that that's a kind of motherhood statement he is making here so what he is saying is sishtachara the sishtachara is coming here next sentence you see what he is saying yani yan asmakagum yani asmakam as i told you this gum is a ajurveda add to the im in ajurveda im always becomes gum in pronunciation that's part of the veda so it says yan asmakagum this is yan asmakam im becomes gum there actually so yani asmakam sucharitani he says i am your guru in bhagavad gita he said yadyad acharati shreshtah tadyad deva itar janaha krishna said that what people asayat pramanam kurte lokastha danu vartate what he does people will follow it leading by example all that he said but here you see what broad minded this rishi is how courageous they are to say look at us we may do some of the things which are not correct don't do it that's what he is saying asmakam sucharitani sucharitani those which qualify into that which means please understand we are not above blemishes they have the courage to say that they have the courage to say that we are not above blemishes all the time you need extraordinary courage to make a statement like that they say i am you know you better listen to me i know everything but swami paramarthananda's lecture when i was hearing he made a beautiful reference he said if you follow a person 100% letter and spirit you follow only the person you will end up in a cult 
if you follow if you follow a scripture you will end up in a tradition this is how he is put this idea the idea he put is that's what this rishi is saying he is saying i i have told so many things to you but a time must come you should overstep me you should outgrow me not overstep outgrow me understand there are areas where if i am not uh, strictly following you should be able to grow beyond me that's what is coming through this so sishtachara only as long as it doesn't come in conflict with our shruti pramana that's why he says yani asmakam sucharitani only sucharitani na duscharitani duscharitani he has lived because no itarani look at this 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 anuvaka is very powerful in communication i have been saying this look at he could have stopped with this sentence he could have said yan asmakam sucharitani tani toya toya upasyani by you you must follow only the, he could have stopped there he has added no itarani look at the power of communication here if you want to unambiguously communicate you have to tell the negative things also because if you are stopped here it does not uh, preclude the possibility of you also following some bad things this is a subtleness of communication this anuvaka is full of that there is subtlety in communication shraddhaya deyam he could have put a full stop there you are going to see he said ashraddhaya deyam he made it watertight this is called clarity in communication so no itarani he put to make sure that even in sleep even in your dream you should not think of a possibility of following a person of a great standing of that act which can go against the shruti and the smriti all those are contained in these two lines that you see here that's why he says yani asmakum sucharitani tani toya upasyani you must follow that he did not put a full stop he put, he put a comma and said no itrani which means forget filter the other things so don't bring parashrama for uh, beheading the mother's mother that's not the story there it's meant for something else don't bring uh, uh, you know dronacharya to say it is good good to ask for somebody's thumb for guru dakshana no that's not the issue there don't bring krishna and say ashwatthama hataha kunjaraha you tell in silence and kill drona that's what he tried ashwatthama hataha kunjaraha elephant elephant is said in silence ashwatthama hataha drona last is concentration he said kill adi over whole mahabharat war was like that so you there's a lot of dharma sukshma that's why i am little worried because in some of the serials you can't get into this level of discussion it gives a very different meaning to us we can get away with anything it's not so we need to know what to look when where that needs a high level of wisdom all these this rishi is trying to communicate to the passing out students in this then he says eke chasma chreya gumso brahmana tesham toya sanena prashvasitavyam he says eke cha asmat 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 is panchami it's an apadana compared to me compared to us asmat shreya somebody who is superior to us we are in terms of knowledge and brahmana is only knowledge brahmana is all others are new found things brahmana is only knowledge poverty and knowledge coexist with brahmana that was the kind of a framework which was there for a long time anyway so it says asmat shreya brahmana okay so those brahmanas when they come what do you do this is a he is giving a, a particular piece of advice here so here he says tesham tvayasanena prashvasitavyam so there are two commentaries available for this so i have color coded something there okay and there are two two meanings i have written so first part is okay first part says there is a very learned person a very wise person is coming or you know you are going to the assembly of a person where there is a much wiser you know that's uh, up to that brahmanaha now the second part says what do you do so there are two ways to understand this he says twaya by you tesham asanena prashvasitavyam you know give them respect give them you know understand that you need to give them you know respect put them in wherever you know give them uh, satkara that is one kind of a meaning right 
that is what I have written in the second in the red. What happens is Twaya Asanena Asane. See, there are the Asanena can be split. Sanskrit is a very powerful language actually. Asanena is there. What you can do is up to Asane, you can cut it off. So now you have Twaya Asane. Then Na. Na means Nahi. Don't. That's the meaning of Na. He is only for emphasis. Na is enough. He is always used in Sanskrit only for emphasis. My favorite example for that is Yada Yada Hi Dharmasya. That he is just to give a punch. He always used Nahi. Hindi mein Oi mein we, we, uh, we do the same thing. Abhi. Abhi is Abhi. He is always for emphasis only. So, Toya Asane Na. Toya Asane up to that is one. Na Prashva Sitavyam. Keep them seated. Don't even breathe. Don't even breathe means don't, uh, you know, die out of congestion or something. What it means is, you know, you intensely listen. So don't, you know, it's time for you to take rather than talk. So there are some people who say, I'll ask a question 45 minutes, they will give a background to the question. That's the end of the story. You know, so the, if you split it like that, Tesham Toya Asane, up to that you cut it. That means offer, you know, Tesham Asane, they are all in, in seating. That is the meaning. Toya Asane means they are in seating, which means they are in an assembly. So when you are in an assembly of learned person, if you are a little wiser, try to take ideas from them rather than waste your time talking. Na Prashva Sitavyam, don't even breathe. Don't even breathe means, it's a figurative usage. Means, you know, take. Don't waste your time, you know, wasting your time. It's a great opportunity. Take. That is one meaning that I have written in red. So if you had split it like that, the na has to be split. Tesham asane means they are all sitting. At that time, na prashvasitavyam. Don't even breathe. Means uh, be in rapt attention and try to gather your knowledge. That is one way to say it. Another way to say is Tesham Toya by you Asanena Prashvasitavyam. Asanena means by an asana. Offer them a seat, give them respect, do satkara. So there are two ways to understand. So essentially the Guru is saying that, you know, in the council of wise people use that opportunity to, you know, partake that wisdom. That is a nice thing that can happen to you in your life. So try to do that. Keep them respect, understand that, you know, these are people who are new to be, you know, uh, respected. So all those kinds of meanings are part of this kind of a thing. So. This part of the Anuvaka has primarily how do you resolve some of the questions that you have, what is your framework and then a little bit on this. Then he gets into, the Rishi gets into another topic which to me is a very very important thing which is loss of giving. It's so grand. In fact when I talked about three types of dana in Bhagavad Gita chapter 17 I actually brought this uh, whole mantra there. If you, some of you may recollect. I brought all these mantras there because uh, this really is grand loss of giving. Now, dhanam, if you get into the Indian repository of knowledge, you will find a large chunk of references and subhashitas. I am aware of it. So, today two hours I spent into some subhashita bandagara and a few... I have some repository of subhashitas. I plunged into it. I brought some first some shlokas I want to bring. Because you, the kind of perspective you have taken on dana, and that has pervaded into our living so much, you have to be in a village to understand it. You have to be in a village to understand it. If you go to a village, there are in many places they would have put some solid stone and rock. You know why? Person who is carrying must be actually, uh, he must get a help to offload for some time. That is a level of thinking. Come summer, you go to any village in this, uh, in this part of this country, you will get buttermilk free, not one cup, ten rupees. Shamadhanam, all kinds, dana is our living. Dana is our intense life principle. So I will take some shlokas, uh, or many of them, I will take some of them and then get into the Taitriyas. Beautifully, uh, they have put in very concise format some principles of giving. So, dhanam is actually a very natural phenomenon, right? Because there are so many, look at this. Pibandi, pibandi nadya hai, soyameva na ambaha. A river does not drink its own water. 
That's all. These are all very figurative usage. It's only you have to reflect on this. Don't use your rational mind and say, how can a river drink its own water? In this rational mind with which you will be an utter failure in understanding Indian wisdom. I put three videos on it in YouTube. Somebody is interested, you can see it. 10, 10 minutes, I put three videos. What are the challenges in understanding ancient Indian wisdom? I have three videos in my channel. With rational mind, if you read, you will prove yourself totally wrong. Please don't do that. Never read any ancient Indian text with rational mind. Again, my favorite example is, Draupadi was disrobed. Don't read it from an analytical mind. Because if you bring analytical mind as a professor of operation management, I will ask what is the manufacturing lead time for the sari? Who is winding it? What is the mechanism to wind it? What is the mechanism to unwind it? Is the business process balance, capacity balancing? <laughs> this is all you can do when you look at a story rationally. That story is meant for something. Like that, all these shlokas are like that. If you read rationally, it is a laughing stock. That's why Westerners are laughing at our wisdom. Our wisdom is very deep and intuitive. You have to reflect on these ideas in a different way. So it says, Pibanti Nadya Swayameva Nambaha. A river does not drink its own water. That's the first part. Then say, Swayam Nakadanti Palani Vrikshaha. This majestic mango tree only makes a trade possible for somebody. It doesn't eat its own mango fruit. That's what it says. Na adanti sasyam kaluvi vari vaha. The rain does not say, let me take all the sasyas and go, because I am the major enabler of growing all these wheat and rice and all these sasyas, danyas. The rain does not say that. Then it says, paropakaraya satam vibhutaya. People who rise to high levels of their manifestation, vibhuti, and their existence are like this. Paropakaraya satam. That's how they approach their life, is what this shloka is saying about dhanam. In Bajagovindam, look at Adi Shankaracharya. You know, it is easy to say all these ascetics had nothing, they are all talking about actually, you know, only God. It's not uh, actually true. It's phenomenal amount of social thinking, phenomenal amount of management, so much is there. Shankaracharya, if you take, look at this shloka. It says, Giyam, Geyam Gita Nama Sagasram, Deyam Shripati Rupa Majasam. He says, every day, Sahasranama, Vishnu Sahasranama, Lalita Sahasranama, whatever you can. And Gita, read a little bit of Gita, read Sahasranama. That's the first part. Keyam Gita Nama Sahasram. Deyam, do Dhyana of Shripati, the Lord of Shri, which is Vishnu. Rupa Majasram, right? So uh, that is what the second line. Then he says, Neyam Sajjana Sange Chittam. Get yourself led into a Satsanga. Satsangya is nisangatvam, nisangatve, nirvo mahatvam, he already says. Nirmo hatve, nischala tattvam, nischala tattve, jivan mukti. In another shloka he says, but he says, try to find a good company. It does a lot of good to you. And what is the last he said? Deyam dina janaya cha vittam. He is a great social scientist. He says, don't you know, enjoy yourself all by yourself. Take care of poor people a little bit. These are the four, Nitya Karma he is giving in a very nice, small, sweet little way. He says, deyam dina janaya cha vittam. Share your riches with some poor people. That's a very fundamental thing that this culture, this country has very greatly believed. You'll see it in very strong terms in this country, in the countryside, in the villages. That's why one of my colleague, Professor Vaidyanathan, wrote when, you know, uh, uh, Warren Buffet come and said, India should know how to give more. He said, you don't know what India is giving. Because the first act of giving is you should not say that you are giving. Beautifully, he wrote an article. Hats off to him. He said, what do you know about Indian giving here? I should not say I am giving. It is not the CSR nonsense that we are talking. We should give without knowing. In this country, you know how much every one of us are doing, every parents are doing, I know that. You don't have to go and say I am giving. So he wrote a fitting article to Warren Buffet in response to what appeared in Hindu. He said, you don't know what charity is very concealed and underground here, you don't know. Huh? No, there is a Western and Indian perspective. I will show you. I have one slide in which I talked about it in chapter 17. I brought this again because it's very, very important, crucial. Anyway, before that, some Subhashitas I want to take. He says, Dhanaya Lakshmi. Eh? Sukritaya Vidya. If your, if your knowledge cannot do good to others, this knowledge is of no use. 
this vidya is no use because today is the maxim is knowledge is power our maxim is not that knowledge is purifier nahi jnanena sadrsham pavitram eha vidyate that's what bhagavad gita krishna says our culture is knowledge is purifier not power power as a very aggressive and a very you know market oriented language knowledge is not power knowledge is purifier for us if you are more knowledgeable you should be purer otherwise it is not knowledge it's all avidya it's not vidya so he says sukrutaya vidya right chinta parabrahma vinishchitaya your chinta your thought is always about parabrahma that's how you know you should engage most of uh, this thing today's chinta i talked about it a few classes before in taitiro upanishad it's all about you know this wealth management you know this gives 40% 13% this gives 12% if i park it here and this is how we spend a lot of our time but he says no parachintaya parabrahma vinishchintaya vinishchitaya paropakaraya vachamsi right he says you must have uh, you know your words and deeds are for helping others all your knowledge is for helping others yasya vandya striloki tilakasya eva a person who has these three attributes what are these three, three attributes he says danaya lakshmi sukrutaya vidya chinta parabrahma right these three attributes if somebody has it this is like the crown of jewel in him that's what this this shloka actually says it is from subhashita suradrumaha in from that text like there is one more nasti vedat param shastram nasti matuhu paro guruhu okay nasti danat param mitram look at this it says your dana can get you mahanarayan upanishad has the same statement i will show you mahanarayan upanishad mahanarayan upanishad says through dana you can actually win over your enemies also so he says nasti danat param mitram it helps you in many ways not only here in in the next world when you go that's what it says ihaloke paratra cha so this is a good investment for your trajectory of life life does not get over in one janma that is not our paradigm if you believe in that paradigm then dana becomes very important life is not just one you know accidental attempt of a parent and so you spend a little bit time here and go if that's life is not so simple our paradigm is much robust life is a journey this janma is only one milestone or one comma in your life there are so many commas in your life if you have that perspective then you know how to do what to do even now so that's why these all these are very very important <laughs> look at here yudyanti pashavaha sarve all animals know how to fight it's a basic instinct as much as you know how to fight all animals you may fight for food fight for job whatever but fighting is an instinct of animals yudyanti sarve pashavaha patanti shukasarika even a parrot can read if you tell it it will keep repeating and it will read it read in that sense right datum janati yah vittam saha shurah sacha panditah so if you say i can do all that you are like animals i can't separate you on the basis of you are able to fight for your position fight for your existence you are able to talk very well there are enough examples i can you know show it in you are like a pashu but if you know how to give datum janati yah vittam right saha shurah saha panditah is what the that fellow is really pandita huh? he says he is shura is what this thing is saying chanakya niti i found two nice shlokas there are inter- interesting shlokas he says kshiyante sarvadanani yagna homa bali kriyaha these kinds of danas he says are they will perish perish in their fruits after a while this is like holiday resort your punya is only a time share once a share is over you have to come back to this world it's like a time share so every year 3 days remember upon how much money you pay in the same way all these punya punya will take you to swarga but you know that's why in, again in bhagavad gita he said abrahma bonan kitah abrahma you know bonan brahma punaravartino janaha ab ab bona brahma kitah punaravartino juna he says hey arjuna from brahma to the worm will come back here the brahma who does srishti karya he you know, only thing is his time share is his uh, credit is so large 
he'll take a little longer time. He says they will all come here. In chapter 8 of Bhagavad Gita, he said, he'll come back here. So that's what it is, Kshiyante. Right? Nakshiyate patradanam abayam sarvadehinam. Whereas, if you are able to invest on a character, a worthy character, if you can invest, that will perpetuate the chain of, the chain of charity. That's why in the earlier Anuvaka, he said, Satyancha swadhyaya pravachanecha. Swadhyaya and pravachana is one kind of dana here. It is jnana ignya. You don't say, I will learn everything and then I am happy. I don't care what will happen to the future generation. This is the problem Indians are deeply immersed in. They don't want, have no respect to say, I have to pass it on, pass the baton to my child. They respectfully away, go away from the child. Child now wants to look at something from elsewhere. And so this is a selfish thinking. That I will learn good things, but I don't have a responsibility to give it back. If you give it properly, then this shloka says, it is better than the other. Nakshiyate. Patradana is very, very important. That's what he's saying. Then he says, the next sloka is also interesting. He says, there are three things in which you should have satisfaction. There are three things in which you should not have satisfaction. Santosha Trishuhu Kartavya. In three things you should have satisfaction. What are that? Swadare. Spouse. Right? Bojane. Eating. And Dhane. Wealth. The wealth that you created your spouse and the food you eat, try to know that you should have a sense of satisfaction, otherwise you will be in trouble. Try to have a sense of satisfaction. But then he says, Trishu chaiva na kartavya hai. On three things you should not feel satisfied. And what are those three? Adhyayane, this jnana ignya that you go through, it's a lifelong. Don't say stop it enough. Today's education is once you get a job, that's the end of the story. Whereas that's why I said our education knowledge is very different. It is uh, to purify you. Purifying you is a lifetime process. Not just a one time up to a point of getting a degree and getting a job. So, Adhyayane, Japa. You know, that's why he said, Deyam, you know, Rupam, Sripati, Rupam, Ajastra. Contemplation, don't stop. Don't get satisfied with the contemplation. Do some more meditation. Is what it is saying. And, Dane Yoho. In giving, don't get satisfied. In accumulating wealth, get satisfied. But in giving, don't get satisfied. That's what Chanakya Niti is saying. So there are, this whole idea of Dhanam is so ambivalent in our country. So ambivalent in our country, in every ritual you will find. Yajna Dhana Dapa Kriyaha. In Bhagavad Gita there is a shloka in chapter 18. I will quote that shloka. I brought it. Pavanani Manishinam is what Krishna has said. Anyway, we will see it. So we have all kinds of Dhana. You have Anna Dhanam, Kanya Dhanam, Vidya Dhanam. You have Shrama Dhanam. The greatest uh, takeaway from Sikh culture and Sikh ideology is Kar Seva. You go to Gurdwara, you go inside and roll a few chapatis and come. What a grand idea they have. In Samaja, if you have so many hands, we put all, is that society is only the greatest society, not a society in which rights, society of rights. Society of rights will divide society on the basis of strength that you have. An underprivileged have no rights in this country. Not only in this country, in the US also. Underprivileged have no rights. If you build a society of rights, that's not sustainable. Whereas look at the Shramadana as a concept of society. Go and go to your Gurdwara and go inside and see for some time and come, your heart will become very light. I have great regard for them for that. That is the greatest contribution of Sikh culture. Shramadana is also there. So Annadana, Kanyadana, Vidyadana, Godana, Bhudana, you know, when I remembered when my grandfather passed away on the twelfth day when we do a, you know, this, if you read Garuda Purana, you will find this soul in one year there is a journey it goes through. It's a very detailed thing. That's why when people die, somebody dies in house, people read Garuda Purana. I actually read at that time. Because at other times they will not allow me to read. <laughs> but I was curious now, why should I read? It was a fantastic piece. I didn't read fully. In the 10 days, how much ever I could read, I could read. It really prepares the psychology of a person towards a departed soul. So there are so many things written there. And uh, on the 12th day, actually they do what is called Pinda Pradhana. See, this Preta, Preta actually, the soul, I'm in Garuda Pradhana it says, after the, the person is dead, the soul actually keeps rotating here. Okay, it's so much used to so many years, no? So many, maybe 70 years, 80 years, 60 years, whatever. It keeps rotating here. So on 12th day, what they do is, 
they actually push it. They symbolic all these are, there is a lot of symbolism in all these. But they convey a deeper meaning actually. All our rituals have enormous symbolism, but they actually convey something deeper. So they do what is called Pinda Pradhana. What they do is in the three ancestors, they push the senior most ancestor and include this. The idea is this Preta now must know that I am now. This is like after you become a competitor, veteran. That means your IPL is over, career is over. Your cricket match is over the moment you sat in the studio and started commenting. The same way, moment this Pinda is removed and this Pinda is brought in, the Preta will actually go. Oh. So, yeah, Sapindi Karana. They call it a Sapindi Karana, right? And it has, you know, in different languages, it is all corrupted into sound, in the, all the different words they use. It's Sapindi Karana is the correct Sanskrit word, the ritual. Now this soul has to know, it, you know I have to get out of this place. This is no, not my world anymore. So in order for that soul to go, that day they do a very elaborate dana. I saw it. In fact, I know it so well because when my grandfather passed away, I was in charge of all that, that uh, store of those items. Buying also, two of us did. And that I, when I read Garubran, I could relate a lot of stuff. You know, Chatri, you have a mat, you have a chapel, you have a cup of water, you, you name what, what not. In every ritual it is there. Why? Because unless you keep on giving, the idea of giving will never come to you. Because the hardest thing is to take 10 rupees and give here for no reason. Because there is a depletion of money. Hardest thing is to take money and give without any reason. In this country people could effortlessly do it. Villages they do it royally. So royally they do. The less educated they do more royally. So I was a PhD scholar in IIT Madras. So what I used to do is, uh, you know, whenever a staff gets married or somebody, I was a little bit uh, mixing with everyone. So I told them one day, let's not all of us give 20 rupee, 30 rupee, it's of no use. I am willing to, you know, go around. I was in good terms with the faculty also with the teaching staff, 90. So I used to generally, when when somebody gets married, I'll take a paper. <laughs> and then I will take it. None of the professors will sign. They will say, come to me later. I found the trick there, the amount were always less. These uh, non-teaching stuff were more, uh, <laughs> some more gracious, or some more, I don't know what it is. I am saying, less they educated, more the brave they are in doing dana. So these are the kind of dana. You know, godana, budana, swarnadana. So many things are there. And Dharma Shastra is so practical, it says you are such a poor person. You have to put a, pea, a flower, a, a tulsi leaf and pour some water. That is your dana. But then what we are doing is we bypass everything and come there straight. It says we can't do bhu dana, do go dana. If you can't do go dana, do sorna dana. If you can't do sorna dana, you do uh, you know, some kapar tamra dana. If you can't do it, you give one rupee. Today we have now you know, straight. There is this uh, snake ladder game. So straight we have come here. That uh, vitiates the spirit of giving. So, so many things are there, all religious rules or rituals that we do are integral part of yajna is only dana. You read Puranic stories, you will find it. The whole Kata Upanishad came only out of that. The genesis of Kata Upanishad is only from that. This father wanted to do some yajna because he wanted to achieve something. But this man was so smart, he was giving useless items in dana. So the son caught hold of him, Nachiketas caught hold of him. He found that in fact the descriptions are so good in Katopanishad. It says this uh, uh, cow that they gave has no teeth in its mouth. <laughs> I forget the Sanskrit shloka. Next class I will tell you that shloka. So beautifully written. So the boy asked, he found the smartness of the father. So he kept on pestering the father, whom am I going to give me? Well, he was very upset with the fathers. The father got so angry, he said, I'll give you to Yama. But the point is, if you do a Ishtakami, Kamishti, if you do, if you do Ishti with Kama, any Kamya Karma you do, do's and don'ts are very tightly applied. Vidhi and Nisheda are very tightly applied. So this boy went to Yamapuri. Otherwise, his father's, uh, whatever he desired, will not. That's the genesis of Katopanishad. Everything that comes out of that. So why I am saying Dana is part of our rituals. Today we don't know the meaning of rituals, so we find this is a waste of money. There is a larger principle behind all this. Anyway, we will see it. So, there are some perspectives on dhanam, offering to God. Is, that is why, you know, Vivekananda, Ramakrishna Paramahamsa, they use the word Daridra Narayana. 
they said it's a great opportunity for me to give to a poor it is not throwing money it's a great opportunity for me to see god in these poor men daridra narayana is the word that they coined vivekananda daridra narayana you see narayana in a daridra that's a kind of uh, perspective that we have in dana and anyway, i think this i'll continue in the next class already 75 there are very crucial differences between a western thinking of dhanam i i wrote a, i read a very nice paper i thought i'll call out some ideas which i did long back 2 3 years back so anyway we'll continue that in the next class next week we don't have a class i am traveling so we will meet only on 1st of june 25th may we don't have a class